My name is Rick Xu. I'm with the Marketing and Solution Sales Department here in Huawei USA, based in Plano, Texas. Today, I'm going to talk about a very innovative product called Compact RAM. Let's look at this conceptual diagram. First of all, the Compact RAM, it is an LTE base station, or the standard name for that is LTE Node B. This is the LTE Node B, and this is actually a standard LTE network. So we have the terminal, or the UE, the user equipment, and then we have the ENOB, which is the radio access part of the network. And then this part over here, several network elements. These are the core network part of the LTE. And it's called the EPC, or the Evolved Packet Core. OK, and then it's connected to the router, firewall, and out goes the, the internet. So this is great. And this works great for a mobile operator, because uh, the mobile operators are uh, the LTE's uh, target uh, customers. However, uh, many times a fixed uh, operator, for example, a WISP, wireless internet service provider, may also want to offer LTE service to their subscribers. In this case, this complex EPC could become uh, uh, unnecessary and uh, an overkill. So, that's the motivation of the compact RAM. So here, here it is. I'm going to show you a few. Uh, I'm going to show you a few animations from this standard LTE network diagram. We evolve into the compact RAM concept. What it is is we are pulling the functions of the S gateway, the P gateway, the MME, and the HSS. Essentially, we're pulling functions from these four EPC elements. And we put them in the form of software on the eNode B. So the eNode B is still an LTE eNode B. However, it's more than that. It included a lot of the EPC functions. Then this compact RAN eNode B is connected to the router and the firewall. And then it goes to the internet. This is essentially what it is the eNodeB with integrated core functions. So the beauty of this thing is, let's look at this L interface part between the UE and the eNodeB. For a compact run eNodeB, the L interface is completely CGPP LTE standardized. What that means is, to a device, there is no way they can tell they're talking to a compact run eNodeB versus a standard eNodeB with a complex EPC behind it. So that means, for the choices of uh, devices, uh, the operator or the internet service provider, they get to choose any commercial off-the-shelf LTE device. Now I'm going to introduce our senior RAN engineer, Warren Lai, and he's going to do a live demo. And uh, the demo is going to show you how well a compact RAN eNodeB will perform. Hello, everybody. My name is Warren Lai. I'm a senior RAN engineer for Huawei Technologies USA. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to how it works, our compact RAN solution. So what we want to start off with is the actual eNodeB itself right here. This chassis itself is a modular system that can support up to multiple technologies. Behind there, we have it connected to the actual radio head itself. It has four ports, able to support multiple technologies on top of that. Through the actual broadband card, it does transport through fiber. And then from there, we have our connections up to our antennas itself. Here is the actual CPE. So this connects over wireless to the actual base station and then out to the internet. Right there, we have the indoor unit. This is the outdoor unit over there, mounted on the pole. And we'll show you, run you through a few of the things as we're going through different settings on the actual e B. So here, we have the interface to the CPE, and you can see some of the settings that we can set on there. System monitoring, actually check the status of what our signal is. And we can see that's a 4GE. Here's some of our signal levels, the frequency band, the bandwidth, and the physical cell ID and also center frequency. What we'll do is also, we'll do a quick check and see how our speed test looks as we're out to the internet. Granted that we are in a close environment right now, that uh, closed loop kind of environment, but this is still going out to the internet. So what I'll do now is I'm going to change the spatial subframe so we can shift some of the 
downlink throughput to the uplink throughput. We'll test again on the speed test and see. We'll see the shifting between the downlink throughput and the uplink throughput go up. And that is the Compact Grand Solution. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.net.